Robert Allen, sideline reporter for uh, Oklahoma State, but very much involved in what he does, talk shows and much more. Uh, covers Oklahoma State, joins us on Sikkim 365 Radio. And Robert, what? Now tell everybody your daughter just graduated from law school. Is that correct? Yeah, we were down in uh, in Houston, which, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, Houston's okay. I just, you know, when you live in Edmond, Oklahoma, and commute to Stillwater, and uh, and you go into that Houston traffic, that's kind of tough. But, <laughs> no, we were down there. <laughs> it's not my favorite place, but. Yeah, you know, but it is hers and her husband, and she was in the oil business after graduating from Oklahoma State, but she always wanted to do law school, and so she uh, she graduated from UH Law this weekend, and uh, she was one of six that was summa cum laude, and wow. I think her, her final rank in the class is going to be like three or four, so she, she, kicked, she kicked law school in the rear end, and now she's, she's going to be an attorney that will specialize in... Uh, you know, mergers, acquisitions, and especially in the oil business, which that'll be perfect to live in Houston because they do a lot of that down there. Yeah, they do. They do. And she could probably try to get a condo near very close to where she works. She didn't have to deal with traffic. Robert's also on the triple play and pokesreport.com. So we had a list last week we saw on ESPN, I believe it was, about the winners and losers in the transfer portal. And they had Oklahoma State as a team that had struggled so far to date with the transfer portal. Would you agree? Well, I mean, there were more. If you just talk about bodies, yes, they lost more. They lost more bodies to the transfer portal than than they than they gained. Now, um, the crazy thing about the transfer portal, I don't know, got what you Baylor. I, 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 you know, I haven't paid, I guess, close attention. I know Steve Sarkeesian in Texas have gone, you know, crazy with the transfer portal. Um, I think, you know, I'm, I'm just guessing that Baylor's done pretty good with it. Although, you know, after spring lost a quarterback, but that was almost by design with the announcement made of of Blake Shapen being the starting quarterback. Um, it's crazy. I mean, Kansas, Kansas, you know, has, has, they came out of spring and they, and believe it or not, they basically told some kids, you probably ought to go in the portal. And I don't think Mike Gundy has done any of that, but there are there are a few guys that went into the portal at Oklahoma State that you know nobody was getting real upset about. So did they win or lose in the portal? We'll find out. Two offensive linemen just moved in this weekend uh, that that they need to come in and kind of help, and, and they got a running back from Texas A and M, a bigger guy, and DeAndre Jackson that they need to help. And if they do, they'll probably in performance come out ahead. But yeah, in numbers, they, in numbers, they lost more guys than they picked up. Robert, how does uh, moving for the, like this is the off season of kind of stability with Spencer Sanders, which they always knew he was going to be the quarterback, but you never knew what you were going to get. And he really uh, came into his own last year. I mean, you take out the Baylor games and the turnovers are, are almost nothing uh, in, in both of that. So uh, what is it like seeing him entrench as the starter? There's like, he can be the guy. There's no, nobody breathing down his neck and they know what he can do now. Yeah. And I think that was reflected in the spring. Uh, Spencer, they cut his reps back in the spring uh, because, you know, he knows the offense and they kind of, uh, they really put an emphasis on quality of rep versus volume. Plus they needed Gunnar Gundy and the freshman Garrett Rangel to get a, a lot of reps. One of those guys is going to end up being the backup. Uh, that's kind of a battle that's going on right now. Um, but yeah, you could see Spencer was comfortable in his own skin. He, he, you know, since the bowl game, and I know that that game in, in Arlington in the Big 12 championship was a struggle, we would have all enjoyed – you know what we would have enjoyed in Stillwater? We would have enjoyed Siaki Ika uh, declaring for the NFL draft. <laughs> My God, I, I would have made personal phone calls to all the NFL scouts I know personally and suggest they take a good, hard look. <laughs> at that young man, but he stayed, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, he did. Oh, damn, damn, that's <laughs> not <laughs> – we're going to have to give our, our, our centers 
our starting center especially, uh, we're going to have to get him some extra helpings of testosterone before that Baylor game this year. Cause <laughs> that dude, hey, I'm just telling you, that dude does not get nearly the publicity he should. If you go back, and I had, uh, you guys know Craig Way at Texas. Craig had, had told me, he goes, go back and look at our, our video with, with Baylor. He moved the line of scrimmage two yards at the snap. Well, against Oklahoma State in our regular game, we had Danny Goodlefsky, who was a tough kid that I think he and Ika, I mean, they got after each other pretty good. Ika won some, Danny won some. But with Danny Hurt in that Big 12 championship game, a younger, not quite as sturdy center, Joe Mahalski, started. And I saw exactly what Craig was talking about. You go back and look at that game, the, the ball is snapped, and it, in an instant, the offense is pushed two yards back because of Ika. So that's getting off to Spencer Sanders, but I, I just wanted to compliment the young man because he's, yeah, he's a heck of a player. I mean, he really is. Um, but, no, Spencer's even talking about using his COVID year, which would mean 2023 – he would become the first five-year starting quarterback in, in school history. Wow. Yeah, uh, good news, bad news, Robert. Good news for Baylor fans, bad news for everybody else. Ika's back. The entire three-deep is basically back on the D-line, and they had a Jackson player from Tulsa. So, Jackson player. Who, yeah. Who OSU, now see, you guys talked about the portal. There's one that Mike Gundy and crew would have really have liked to, and I think they worked really hard on trying to get Jackson player to just come down the, the Will Rogers Turnpike from Tulsa and land in Stillwater, and instead he went he went back close to home. He's a, I think he's a university high kid. Midway, and, midway. Uh, midway. Well, yeah. he, one of those. He, he <laughs> went back home, and and uh, yeah, he will. Yeah, he's really good. I mean, he's right there behind Ika. Yeah, that, that defensive line, Oklahoma State returned everybody too. Oklahoma State and Baylor, those two schools should have the best defensive lines in the in the conference. What has been your kind of impressions having seen uh, Derek Mason now for a little while and just the, the changes that you're kind of expecting on defense? Obviously, some, some good players are also on their way out the door um, as well. But uh, what, just kind of what is your, your feeling, your, your temperature gauge right now for Derek Mason and any changes on defense? You know, and, and you guys wanted to talk portal, so I'm kind of dragging the portal through the whole conversation. The biggest losses in the portal – were uh, in the secondary. Jark Bernard Converse, who after the, the Fiesta Bowl, I had seen him in the locker room and after we finished up the postgame show, and, and I said, are you really coming? Because I thought he should go to the NFL. Mm-hmm. And he goes, no, I'm coming back. I want to I want to bring these young guys along. And Jason Taylor, who's a returning safety, Jason and I are going to be the mother hens. We're going we're gonna, to – the secondary will be really good next year. And we already knew Tanner was going with uh, – uh, Jim Knowles to Ohio State. Um, and then shortly after school starts in Stillwater, I find out that Jarek's thinking about going in the portal. And I'm like, what the heck happened? Well, he's from Louisiana. And um, that guy over in, that took that job at LSU that can't dance worth a lick, <laughs> apparently he does know how to tamper. And some of that went on. And at the very end, Jarek, kind of left the the building saying, I don't want to go, but I can't, I can't turn this down. And so that was, that's an NIL issue that, that I've, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm a little sore about, but you know, it is what it is. And that's what happened. What they've done though, is they've really rebuilt during the spring. Corey Black, who is a Waco kid. Yep. Uh, he's Waco Conley. I got that one right. Didn't I? Yes. Okay. Um, and, you know, he's at one starting corner. Jabbar Muhammad, a former DeSoto kid, is at the other. And Jabbar has made that cross, guys, from being a cover corner that doesn't have to look around after the play's over to see if the official thought he interfered. He is so good at his technique and so good at coverage that you feel pretty good. Now, they're going to need some depth there. The safeties, they were able to rebuild that. Um Linebacker, probably, I mean, you can't, there's going to be a drop off from Malcolm Rodriguez and Devin Harper. Uh, there just is. Um, but 
you know, the kid they got from Xavier Benson that was at Texas Tech and then spent a year uh, last year was the defensive player of the year in the Southwest Junior College Conference, Tyler. He's going to be really good at linebacker. And that brings me to the Mason, answer the Mason question. I think he's very comfortable in his own skin. He doesn't feel like he has to uh, match up to Jim Knowles. Now, Mike Gundy told him, look, you come in here, defensive playbook staying the same, terminology staying the same. You're going to have to learn this, not the kids learn something new. And Derek was fine with that. But he has put his own spin on it. And uh, he's going to have some different packages, which will be fun. And I say this for, for Smokey here, because I know you're a, you're a long time. I used to listen to your Dallas Cowboy reports, right? Yes. I, so it's been a while. Back, yeah. Oh, yeah. Back in the days, Tom Landry and all that. That's what I grew up with, too. And uh, you know the old flex defense? Yes. I haven't seen it until this spring. Mason's thrown a version of the flex out there that, it's interesting. It, it now, it's it's some. I mean, I honestly haven't seen it around, but he's flirting with it. I don't know what, whether it'll end up making the cutting room floor or making it into the defensive game plans. But honestly, after watching it a little bit in spring, hey, Tom's flex would still work these days. The old man, the old man knew what he was doing back in the day, so we may see some of that. Yep. It'd be interesting. Yeah, the, the, the problem, though, you talk to old Cowboy players, nobody else but Tom could call it the exact yeah, way. He yeah. just, he he was, it was his defense, and you could get around it. You just couldn't do it exactly the way well, that he could. I don't, I have no doubt this has been dummied down because, <laughs> uh, you know, my, my son used it some at NEO Junior College. He said, Dad, when you run the flex in junior college, you can't do nearly what, what the Dallas Cowboys did. It, it is a... It is a uh, Dr. Seuss version of the flex. So are you going to have a couple of defensive tackles that kind of get crouched down in that funny little stance like Randy White used to do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, they, and, they, and, and it's that uneven line. And then, then that flex player. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and you know, it's, it's different guys. It's, uh, they tried Colin Oliver some with it and uh, Trace Ford. But it'll be an it'll be a, a, a defensive lineman that's real athletic and can do a lot of things because that's obviously what you know Landry built it off of. So, um, but yeah, it's kind of it's kind of fun to watch, kind of fun to see. Robert, obviously uh, Oklahoma State was just really damn good last year, and it came within inches of winning not just the regular season but the Big Twelve ch- championship game. We know that that ending in one of the most remarkable plays ever. Uh, does that still sting? Is there still kind of that sting to that, or is that something you move you move on from? You know what helped, and and, and I I will never um, I'll never de- you know never deny that you want to win the Big Twelve. Number one, I mean I'm sure you know the rings are in in Stillwater from this season. I'm sure Baylor's getting theirs if they haven't already, and I'm sure it's huge and big and. And it says Big 12 champions on it, which it should, and that's what you want. But um, as, as tough as that, and that was the worst that was the worst locker room I'd ever been in after a game. The kids really were crushed. But when they got home and realized they were going to Arizona and they were going to play Notre Dame, because mm-hmm. Notre Dame is kind of a bucket list team. It was for me. Yep. I mean, I was a, I wanted to call an Oklahoma State game with with Notre Dame. I didn't matter where it was. I probably would have preferred it being South Bend, but this was okay too. And the players were the same way. But God, we're going to play Notre Dame. That's great. Then you go and have the kind of game you did, especially with Spencer. He had one of the best quarterback efforts, performances in, in school history. You come back from being down 21 in the game, and you beat Notre Dame. That was as good a possible consolation following the loss in, in Arlington in the Big 12 championship game as you could possibly have. And and I will say this. You want to win the Big 12, and I'm proud of Baylor. I watched I watched that game, you know, afterwards, and we, we were celebrating and watching Baylor finish off Ole Miss. But if you give me a choice, and I do love New Orleans too, 
But if you give me a choice of being in the desert beating Notre Dame or going down to, to uh, Bourbon Street and beating Ole Miss, man, I, I kind of like the I like the bowl game option we got. I hate the fact it doesn't come with a Big Twelve championship. So yeah, the long that's a long answer to. Sure, you'd like to have won that. Nobody here has forgotten it, but they also don't walk around every day with a frown on their face. And, God, we blew the Big Twelve yeah. championship. There's a there was a lot that came out of that that was really good. And of course, Mike Gundy stood up there, and because it was Notre Dame, he was able to to say this, and it's become a trademark line here. We have a logo too, mm-hmm. and um, they've kind of built the off season around that with recruiting with things they're doing in the program, the, the, the uh, raises across the board in football, um, the new president and the AD, they, uh, they get it. They, they understand what's important and, and what sport's going to put you in the future, whatever your future is. And at Oklahoma State, everybody's on board now and understands it's football. I think that's the same way. Obviously, I know Dr. Livingstone. We went to school yep. together. And you guys have got an AD that gets that too. So I think, honestly, I think Oklahoma State and Baylor are in really good positions no matter what happens, whether it's the future Big 12 or whether we have that conglomeration people are talking about that we may morph into, like the NFL with 40, 50, whatever teams. Um, I feel pretty good that, that Oklahoma State and Baylor will be part of that, that future for college football. Robert, a couple of minutes left, and we appreciate your time. You were there on the sideline. You watched what Blake Shapin did to a great defense in that first half, how amazingly sharp he was. And then, of course, he was not the same in the second half, and, and Oklahoma State knew it. And you mentioned the transfer portal with Gary Bohanna now going to USF. Your thoughts about what you saw from Shapin right there at ground level? You know what? It, it's funny going into that, um, you know, when there was – uh, the uncertainty coming out of the, the Waco camp before that game, the coaching staff, they they had a healthy respect for Blake Shapin. And they had told their defense, if, if this is a guy you face, don't don't go into this thinking, oh, we got this made. And uh, and sure enough, that's exactly what we got. I remember, I remember, you know, we have a meeting, the radio crew with, with each coordinator. And I remember Jim Knowles saying, look, I think this kid's one hell of a competitor, and I if we if he's the guy we go against, I I don't think it's going to be it's not going to be easy. This kid's going to he's got the ability to light us up. They did make some adjustments. They were much better in the second half, but the moment was not too big for him. And you know, to be honest, I'm not totally surprised that he won the job. I'm probably more surprised that it got announced. But I I congratulate Dave Aranda. He's you know what? A lot of coaches, they don't put their money where their mouth is. They, you know, they'll say one thing and then they'll do another. But so far, what I've seen out of Dave Aranda with his honesty and with his, look, I'm going to do the right thing for players. And I think Mike Gundy does that too up in Stillwater. He proved that big with this quarterback announcement because the minute he made it, he knew he was going to lose uh, a potential great backup quarterback. So you look at some of the other situations in the league where there's quarterback battles, and you don't see coaches all that eager to announce a winner because they don't want to lose the loser. That that's their backup. So I, you know, but no, I I, uh, I have a lot of respect, and I'm I'm sure that Blake Shapin's going to have a a tremendous uh, season. Hopefully, you know, he'll stay healthy. But I, from what I understand, Baylor's got good options. Uh, right now in the quarterback room, even with uh, even with losing uh, their their starter from last season, so Robert, thank you, man. We appreciate it. Yep, it seems like that's the case as well. He he came out and won the job in the spring as well. That forced the transfer with Gary. Appreciate your time, Robert. Congratulations on the the law degree uh, as well in your family. We appreciate your time, Robert Allen. Covers yeah. Oklahoma State. Yeah. Um, by the way, that Ed 